So, you're a veteran astronaut and you've managed to overcome all the dangers of going to Mars. You beat the deadly radiation, the solar rays, the unforgiving cold, the chlorine storms that last a year or so. Everything except hunger. It's not like you can go to your local waffle house on Mars and ask for an order of scrambled eggs, coffee, and a waffle. What will you eat? Will you grow your own food? How? Elon Musk and SpaceX have an answer to your Martian gastrointestinal troubles. The plan to feed Martian colonists is an ongoing project for the billionaire with dreams of space travel. The Challenge Any colony on Mars of up to 1 million humans ever will require tens of thousands of supply ships loaded with food. Only after a hundred years would the Martians be self-sufficient by eating plants, insects, algae, and fake eggs and milk. This is the opinion of a recent University of Orlando article. Food computers, automated insect farms, and cellular agriculture will allow for completely novel diets produced locally on Mars. In the early years of a Martian colony, everything would be about one thing, survival. Scientists have learned over the past 60 years of space travel a great deal about space food. A Mars mission would take a minimum of two years, so scientists are exploring new approaches and new technology to keep the Martians well-fed. The weight of the cargo on board is a major problem for any Martian mission. A Mars ship can't carry two years' worth of food, it's just not practical. Mars astronauts need to supplement the food on board with another source of food, Martian agriculture. A permanent settlement like the one proposed by Elon Musk, CEO and lead designer at SpaceX, will require enormous amounts of food. So, Elon has created a plan for a Mars colony that will take roughly 50 to 100 years to create. It begins in 2022 with a cargo mission to Mars to confirm water resources, identify hazards, and put in place initial power, mining, and a life support infrastructure. Then by 2024, cargo and initial crew to build a propellant depot and prepare for future crew flights. Eventually, there will be multiple ships of 100 to 200 passengers to Mars in every 26-month launch window, and within 50 to 100 years, a permanent colony of 1 million Martians or more. However, SpaceX suggests that cargo resupply ships will be needed for extra material such as uranium for nuclear power and platinum for manufacturing projects. Elon's Martian Menu First and foremost, Martians will eat hydroponic crops, wheat and corn genetically edited to grow in higher CO2 conditions grown indoor with solar panels, insects and clean meat. The Martian hamburger will be made of cockroaches and crickets. Imports from Earth. Every now and then, the hydroponic corn and cockroach hamburgers will get boring, so humans will need a nice bottle of whiskey or perhaps a frozen lobster dinner. Cows and chickens will not be living on Mars for a while, so that Kentucky Fried Chicken dinner you promised your wife for her birthday will have to come from Earth, and it will probably cost more than your children's education. Petri dish proteins, single-cell meat and plant protein products will be grown in Martian labs. Nothing will go to waste and everything will be automatically recycled. Human waste will feed insects and plants. Solid waste will become building materials. Recent discoveries in hydroponic farms that use fish waste products that serve as plant nutrients and plants that oxygenate the fish tanks will probably bring back small fish and crustaceans to the menu. Elon Musk confirmed that the fledgling first colonies would use hydroponics to grow plants. The installations would likely sit inside the specially built habitats. He stated, you essentially have solar power uncoiled solar panels on the ground, feed that to underground hydroponics, either underground or shielded by wires and dirt, so then you can be sure that you don't have to worry about excessive ultraviolet radiation or a solar storm or something like that. Fortunately, scientists have found that it's not too hard to grow plants in space. Soviet cosmonauts successfully grew Chinese cabbage, flax, leeks, and onions in 1971 on the first space station with a crew, Salyut-1. 
These vegetables take up water from their roots. So rather than growing plants in soil or even hydroponically, without soil, plants in NASA's veggie system grow with their roots in an enclosed system, in pillows filled with a porous growth medium which provides everything they need. Polyurethane-coated pellets inside the pillows have been designed to release nutrients over months, and the pillows supply water to the plants and allow air to get to the roots. Growing vegetables and keeping fish tanks isn't all about nutrition, though. Those first cosmonaut farmers discovered that tending and nurturing their plants had important psychological benefits as well. Other considerations once a crew reaches Mars, gravity will solve some of the growing problems seen on the International Space Station, which already has done a great deal to advance hydroponic methods of growing edible crops. Martian gravity is less than half that of Earth's, but it still lends weight to things, in contrast with the weightless conditions on the station. Astronauts should be able to grow plants in Martian soil, too, according to past studies. And any agricultural structures built on Mars could play a bigger role than just housing food, including treating wastewater and converting carbon dioxide to oxygen for astronauts to breathe. At present, red romaine lettuce is the only food grown in space that NASA has approved for astronaut consumption. The lettuce's antioxidant properties could reduce the consequences of humans getting radiation exposure in space. Researchers are also testing cabbage and peppers. Musk estimated that a one-way trip to Mars for one person would cost about $10 billion and indicated there were ways to reduce that cost drastically by refilling the spaceship tanks in orbit. He also talked about the need to build a methane-based propellant production plant on Mars for the spaceships. The methane could be created through the extraction of ice water on Mars and combining it with the planet's abundant carbon dioxide. Having the local propellant source and fresh food production could go a long way to creating a self-sustaining colony on the Red Planet located 33.9 million miles from Earth. Moreover, chemical plants could use some of the compounds found on Mars to create plastics that might be used to build shelters, greenhouses, vehicles, and high-tech potting systems for growing food. Robot Bees Tomato seeds were tested aboard space shuttle missions but didn't produce fruit as it would have required pollination. Some have raised the possibility of sending bees or other insects into space to pollinate plants in space gardens, but it's really not that easy, and there are other solutions. An expert on pollination from NASA said that there is no reason why you can't have a robotic system with sensors to cross-pollinate the plants. Currently, the International Space Station has a menu of around 200 items, mostly freeze-dried foods similar to the ready-to-eat meals eaten by combat troops. The problem with this food is that it tends to become very boring very quickly. Astronauts trying to colonize Mars would have a serious problem having to endure the same old chicken casserole for two years at a time.